This is Joseph Coco. I'm at 8 2014 on behalf of Becky Holborn's Art Process Blog. Keep on trucking Nata Soup. If you could introduce yourself, Sabrina. Hi, uh, I'm Sabrina Cattuto. Um, I'm a storyboard artist uh, and character designer currently working on the show Gravity Falls. Awesome. I imagine a lot of Becca's fans are familiar with the show, but uh, could you tell us uh, what role you're playing in the show currently? I'm a storyboard artist. Okay, and um, we know you worked on uh, uh, Sue's the Real Girl, yep. so. So, um, did you were handed a script and you were just you storyboarded that out for uh, the the key animators and the animators to work from? Uh, yes, um, Gravity Falls is a script-driven show, so they do have they do have like strong scripts for us to work from. Okay. Um, but the board artists basically deal with everything everything after that in terms of like kind of creating the visual language, figure out what shot choices to use, figure out what the pacing is, um, and figure out what the acting is for the characters. Um, also, uh, on this particular episode, they didn't really have a design for Giffen yet, so uh, me and some of the, the director and other board artists worked together to come, kind of come with the, up with uh, Giffen's uh, character design. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So, have you been working uh, with the show's cast since, since it began? Uh, I began working in season two, so I started about a year ago. Okay, awesome. And can you tell me a little bit about uh, how that process started? Were you involved uh, with the creators beforehand? Um, the way I got uh, involved with the show was a bit random, and I think it was kind of random for everyone. Yeah. Um, Disney Television doesn't have a great deal of outreach, uh, so it kind of depends on like people randomly knowing when they've hired or like knowing through you know someone. <clears throat> So it was really just your hard work and a little bit of the connections that, that bit, got yeah. you. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about what's bringing you to Ape? Is this your first time here? It's my first time at Ape, yeah. Okay. Um, I came to Ape uh, basically to sell my artwork and comics. Okay. Um, all of this is my personal work um, and the newest thing I have is my short comic called Bleeding Heart, which I funded through Kickstarter in August. Awesome. And how has the response been to that? Uh, the, response, the response has been really, really great. Um, honestly, the Kickstarter did much, much better than I could have possibly planned for. Uh, so I'm really, you know, I'm really thankful to all my backers, to everyone who helped make it possible. Uh, they've been just an enormous help. Um, and currently, I am working on fulfilling all those orders. Basically, as soon as I get back. Okay. And when you attended uh, Cal Arts and was kind of just uh, making your way into the industry, uh -huh. had you planned on focusing? more on animation and doing storyboards for that? Or yeah, I were did. You... Okay. Uh -huh. I didn't really have comics in mind at the time, uh, but after I graduated, um, it struck me that I don't really have time to, you know, take five months out of a year to make a short film. You know, it takes this, you know, short films are great, but they're awfully time consuming. Uh, yeah. Whereas comics, I feel, you know, they can, they can tell a full story, but you can do something that's a bit more manageable. You can do it on your own. Yeah. But right now, that's more appealing to me. Okay. And what's been the process with Bleeding Heart? How did uh, it start off? Is it something that you had maybe intended originally to be an animation and you realized it would lend itself easier to work as a comic? Uh, well, actually with Bleeding Heart, um, it is sort of a prologue story to a much, much larger story that I'm working on called The Last Scientist. Okay. Um, and I had basically, the characters and plots of that story I had been working on since, since high school, really, since a, long, a, long, since a very long time ago. Yeah. Uh, but when I graduated, graduated from CalArts, um, I realized I wanted to go into story, but I felt that I wasn't, I didn't really necessarily know enough about storytelling and story theory to really feel confident in it. So I started studying it just kind of on my own time. Uh, and so I decided to practice by really developing the story into like a full like three act structure. Um, and so I planned out this as a fairly long story. And eventually I was, I thought that, you know, I should make it into a comic. Uh, but since it's so long, uh, my thought was that I could start it off as a mini comic. Someone had actually suggested, you know, if you're starting off, just do a short standalone comic to just give people, you know, a nice little story that gives them a taste of the overall uh, plot that you're going to go for. Uh, so I took their advice and I developed this as a short comic. Um, and then launched the Kickstarter for it. Okay, awesome. And would you have any advice to someone who's looking at trying to break into the animation industry as a storyboard artist? Um, as a storyboard artist, 
talking about portfolios, are you speaking uh, specifically storyboards or comics or anything related to sequential art? Uh, for a storyboard position, you really do need a portfolio that's primarily focused on your actual storyboards. Yeah. Uh, and you'll want like at least three, three or so sequences of really strong work. However, uh, comics will, you know, those are very similar uh, fields. So if you have comics, you know, that you really like, that you can totally toss those in your portfolio, people really like them. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, but you know, for, for say it differs between working on storyboards for an animation which is already established versus working on your own uh, creator um, like things? Um, it does uh, change a bit between you know, what particular show you're working on. Um, yeah. A lot of you know, your process when you're working with someone else will depend on the person you're working for. Uh, for instance, um, I've only done professional storyboards for Gravity Falls um, and it so happens that uh, our boss, Alex Hirsch, has a really strong vision for what he wants to show to be. He also comes from a storyboarding background. Okay. Uh, so he has a very strong, uh, he gives very strong direction for the boards and for the story. And he does uh, that through the scripting or just from talking it over with you before you get started on uh, anything? Actually, there's two ways. One, he does it through the script. Uh, he has a very strong hand in the writing process. And also, uh, after we do our first pass of boards, we uh, pitch them to Alex and he will give notes on them. He actually is very good at giving these really clear, really uh, concise notes because he comes from the same background. Awesome. Uh, so if you're working with someone like him, you're really just working to, um, to understand his vision, to understand what he really wants the show to be, and give him, you know, just give him like 100% of what you can possibly give, and like bring, see what you personally can bring to the table. Okay. Um, for other shows, it might be more about, you know, trying to more put your own spin on things. Um, you might have more, more of a hand in the actual plotting of an episode. Um, but for your own story, I think because you have creative control of the entire thing, obviously there's a lot more responsibility. Yeah. Uh, but I think you're probably more concerned about, you know, story theory and, you know, plot and character and getting really all the heart in the structure of the story and the characters um, and just really seeing, you know, what you personally really want to do, which can be really hard. You know, yeah, hard, you know. especially if fans are constantly talking to you about their expectations. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to reach into your soul and to, like, grab at your essence and yank it out and put it on page, you know, like, it can take, it take, like, ages you make, figure out what you want. You make storytelling sound so gruesome. Yeah, <laughs> so. Um, so it's a very gruesome, tragic process. You find out sad things about yourself. Okay. Um, but I think it's worth it. I think, you know, it's therapeutic in a weird way. Um, so, uh, working with someone else, it's more about honing your skills, how your particular, um, your particular craft, and storytelling for yourself is more about, like, make, like the responsibility of bringing your own vision to life. Right. So, what specifically um, about Ape drew you to the convention? How, um, how long have you been on the convention circuit, I guess, is, is the first question. Um, I have not been in the convention circuit for very long. This is only my third convention. Okay. Uh, my first was CTN Animation Expo, which is a smaller uh, smaller convention in Burbank. Okay. Uh, and then I went to WonderCon, which is currently in Anaheim. Um, I had actually heard about Ape for a long, long time before I had attended here. Um, I guess just like when I was back on Live Journal and when I was, you know, on DeviantArt, I would always hear people, you know, oh, I'm going to Ape, you know. Yeah, so many great like creators Ape. there. Exactly. So, like, I'm really excited to be here, you know, at this convention that I've heard so much about. Okay. And would you have any advice to someone considering coming to Ape for the first time? Oh, well, I mean, I'm only here for the first time, so I'm not sure how useful that would be. Yeah. Um, I guess just have fun, you know, uh, be open-minded, give, give new things a chance, uh, and you'll have a great time. Okay. And uh, where could we find your work online? Uh, you can find me, probably the easiest one is my Tumblr. Um, my username is a little bit hard to spell. It's uh, arithusa, A-R-Y-T-H-U-S-A dot Tumblr dot com. I also have a portfolio website at cgotorun dot com. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter also with Arathusa. Um, and what else? Um, and I will soon be running a Tumblr for my new webcomic, The Glass Scientist, at glass-scientist.tumblr.com. Okay. And what's that project? Uh, the Glass Scientist is a, is a, it's actually the large webcomic that Bleeding Heart is for the short story for. Okay.
again? Um, that was a larger project that, that I've been developing oh, right, for a right, long right. time, you know, since, uh, since so I graduated college. You're kickstarting the larger volume as well now? Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. And are there any other projects that we can look forward to in the future from you? Uh, that's going to be the big one. Yeah. yeah. That's what's going to consume the majority time. of your time. It's also uh -huh. going to be in black and white? No, that one's going to be in color because my Kickstarter did awesome. really well. Uh, completing part, I'm actually able to afford a colorist. Thank you. I hope you have a good day. Thank ape. you. Happy, uh, hope you have